a very long time ago, in an age known as the 80s. A fledgling company named Hasbro had just gotten started with a handful of major toy lines and franchises that stood the test of time and were loved by generations of fans to come. This particular story is about a franchise that was originally met with little girls. But as time passed and the toy line reached its fourth generation, it suddenly started attracting a much broader audience. Yeah, that's right, it's My Little Pony. So anyway, Hasbro originally licensed a few of their franchises as Sunbro Productions, and they made cartoons based on them. My Little Pony's first cartoon started with an episode-long TV special, Rescue at Midnight Castle, also later known as Firefly's Adventure. There are a number of things that Friendship is Magic borrowed from the past generations. And the pilot of Friendship is Magic is basically an overhaul revamp of this particular story that I'm about to review. I'll point out the similarities as they come up. And so the episode starts with ponies doing things, I guess. And then. <laughs> Excuse me a moment. <laughs> anyway. Oh, hey look, they have voiceovers for the opening credits. Because, you know, little kids, I guess, can't read and apparently actually care about the opening credits. Then we see a group of ponies leaping off a cliff. Remember, kids, you can safely leap off dangerous cliffs. Now, as a hero, I can't really approve of that. Please, tell me this movie doesn't get any stupider. Okay, I guess apparently it's not safe after all. That's Rainbow Dash's Generation Ken counterpart, Firefly. You can already see the similarities. That's Twilight Sparkle's generation and counterpart, Wily. Kind of got scared and wished her way down. Apparently her teleportation magic is nowhere near as practical as her generation 4 counterpart who just bamps around like it's nothing. Book season. It calls harvesting time. And Firefly flies around the green Pegasus Melody who warns her not to do so. I have no idea why. You see, Rainbow Dash is basically Firefly in a Generation 3 skip. Except a Pegasus version of said Generation 3. Oh, and here comes the one member of the main six and possibly the sole pony to survive all four generations of toys cartoons, and games, and about five or more different continuities. Applejack. <laughs> Even before she existed, Generation 4 Rainbow Dash is being a nuisance to Applejack. I wonder what the ship would be called. Firejack? I don't know, that's kind of generic. What in the hay is that supposed to mean? Well, at least she <laughs> took it well. Oh dear god, not the theme song again! Wait a second, didn't we already do the opening credits? So this filly here, apparently named Ember, asked Twilight if she'll ever be able to fly or do all the stuff the other ponies do. No, Ember, not all little ponies can fly. Will I jump far like Bokai? Or just appear like you can? Ember, you'll grow up to be your own special little pony. You know, the irony is that she effectively dashed her hopes of doing any of those things by saying that. 
A bunch of ominous storm clouds appear and ponies kind of freak out at the lightning striking near them. And a bunch of... Um... Whatever are done. Descend from the skies. Then some beastly creature riding one of the larger dogs commands the dogs to capture the ponies. You are all doomed. Soon every pony will belong to Tirak, the master of Midnight Castle. Wait, why exactly did they not try to capture the rest? They clearly had a huge advantage here. So Firefly takes off to go on her own while the rest of the ponies go inside. Oh, wait. I'm acting. Ah, oh, sweet Celestia, make it stop. This is, oh my god. Ugh. So Firefly goes off to get help in spite of warnings from the others. We then kept the Midnight Castle. Nice touch. The beast we saw before, Scorpion, locks the captives away and we see Spike. Spike! Yeah, that's right, the original Spike was working for the bad guy originally. Spike begs Scorpion to take him next time, but Scorpion seems angry and says no. Not now, Scorpion Spike. then Not reports now. to his master, the evil clone of the narrator for Transformers Generation 1. Quiet, my friend. Your time will come. We have no, actually, two it's a miniature centaur or hybrid in Tear, one of the three villains I know with the most epic and voices, is... alongside Shao Kahn and Sinistar. All of them really sound a tiny bit alike. More so for Tear and Sinistar and Shao Kahn and Sinistar, but oddly not Tear and Shao Kahn. Run, coward. Two ponies, you say? Only two? Yes. Tyr then explains that he needs two more ponies for his chariot for in order for his plan to work, because apparently he needs to, to pull him so that he can spread the storm bow of darkness across the land, as will be explained later. Uh, yeah, but he tried to tear him, Master Honest. I mean, Honest, he really and truly tried him. Silence! I probably could have sooned this sooner, but oh my god, Spike's voice is annoying in this cartoon. You will prepare another raid, Scorpion. Now, as you wish, Master. That is precisely what I wish. Well, gee, that certainly wasn't resounding sounding at all. Scorpion goes to prepare another raid while we cut the human Applejack and her normal pony TJ in the human world. Okay, her name's actually Megan, but as far as the Generation 4 version of Applejack at least goes, she might as well be human Applejack. Firefly crashes into Megan's well and Megan rescues her. Whatever it is, it sure is heavy. Hello. Talking pony. You talking pony. No freaking really. Ugh. I can fly too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she could figure that out at home. What with your wings and all. At least I could before my wings got soaked. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. That's... Far too realistic for a magical talking Pegasus. <laughs> wow, Peach is a jerk. Megan and Firefly exchange introductions, and Firefly offers Megan a ride. What's yours? Megan, and and that's my pony TJ. Hop on. Uh, you you do know how to ride, I hope. 
course I know how to ride. Try to help my friends. They need you. Me? What can I do? Wait a second. What can she do? You're strong. No, I'm not. Um, no, the question is, what can she do? Let's fight! No, I can't! And you can fly! I said I could ride, not fly! Gee, isn't Megan full of self-confidence? Oh, my friends are just gonna love you! No, they won't! Yeah, I'm with Megan on this one. Mostly because you've got a bunch of pegasi and unicorns that can do magic and fly, and yet you're asking a plain old human being for your for helping you to save ponies from a large giant centaur minutar hybrid thingy. What exactly is the logic in that? Uh, excuse me again. <laughs> oh yeah, Generation 1's movies and stuff were a lot more Disney-like than anything that Friendship is Magic could put out. In fact, you could probably leave an audio swap in a whole new world here, and it would sync perfectly. I can show you the world, shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? And so Firefly returns the currently unnamed Pony Castle and all of the ponies are relief she's safe. This is Megan, everybody. Oh yeah, I guess they don't really use terms like every pony in this cartoon or something. So, how do the ponies react to Megan in the end? She's here to help us. You know, I could say Firefly over exaggerated, but really, she is the kind of character who would do that kind of thing. Because, you know, she's supposed to be the one who saves the ponies, not the other way around. Firefly performs a stunt to save her, but then she starts falling. Oh, we need to be rescued by Scorpion of all characters. Scorpion then warns Megan to leave as the conflict doesn't really involve her. And that, that's really sound advice right there. And coming from a villain especially, and I'd probably be inclined to run away if I were in her shoes, but I'd also want to know why Firefly thought I could even remotely come close to helping. Megan, on the other hand... What are you doing, you... 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 You're a monster, do you hear me? Wow. Rude. See? Whew, you are brave. Am not. He just got me mad, that's all. Now come on. We'll save our friends. Somehow. You know, her friends knew for all of one minute. The pony is Scorpion captured or sized up by Tiark and he tells his guards to take Ember away as she's too small to pull his chariot. Small to pull my chariot of midnight, as you should have known, Scorpan. Well. But you three will do. But now. He then unleashes what was inside that one bag with a heart leaf. The Storm Bowl of Darkness, turning these three ponies into monstrous beasts. I call them nightmares. Scorpion is then told that if he does not capture another pony by midnight, Spike's head comes off, not Scorpion's. Wow.
That's cool. The Mojik has magic powers. He'll help us. But who is what now? He lives in the mushroom over there. This bridge doesn't feel very safe. Yeah, well, it's got gaps every other plank. Of course, it's not safe. And then, what is almost an exact replication of the original Big Lipped Alligator moment itself happens. And I say almost because of what that song was about and the show they gave them, which would be used later instead of the alligator randomly showing up for a more BS Deus Ex Machina. to lay off the LSD. Well, at least it wasn't the big lived alligator moment for Dumbo or Winnie the Pooh, but those were just... Ugh. Of course, the sea ponies have no toys, they never show up after this episode. Ever. I blame Hasbro for this. So, a bunch of giant mushrooms, speaking of all state, move themselves out of the way, leading to this place where a Mootek, or you pronounce his name, lives. Oh, hey look, it's Angel's Bunny's ancestor. So, Mootek then gives off a bit of exposition. Yes, t rex going to force your friends to bring in the night that never ends. Hmm. Bronies, doesn't that sound familiar? From this moment forth, the night will last forever! How can he be stopped? Ah, oh, somebody's got to sneak into his castle and swipe his rainbow of darkness! That's what gives him his power, you know. You know, what has to wonder how he knows all of these things? Magic. Uh, well, he does have magic. Oh, so I guess that would be a logical reason. Oh, no, that's that's not it either. What, what you looking for, Mr. Mochik? The only thing that might help defeat Tirak. A rainbow of light. Do you have one? I got a little piece of one somewhere. Somewhere I, I just forget where it is. But I'll find it, yes, yes. It's got to be around here somewhere. Somewhere there's a little piece of rain. <sighs> Another musical number. I'm just glad that they didn't pack several musical numbers in the shortest amount of time possible. Kind of like a certain episode of a certain cartoon. You know the one. They really should have kept better track of such an important thing. I know! Just let them sing. Yes, that's right, the whole time Generation 1 Angel Bunny had it. Oh, it's the rainbow! Oh, it's from the show! After giving them the rainbow, Mutik rushes our heroes off. And thank 
thank you for all you've done. No time for thanks, no time for thanks, no time for thanks. You've got to stop Tirak before midnight. You've only got, uh, uh, you've, you've got, uh, oh. Goodbye, Mr. Moochick, and thanks again. Hey, you haven't seen my watch, have you? That is worse than my story writer, or even his late grandmother, about losing things. So, remember how I said that the call upon to see ponies was a near exact replication of the original Big Lip Alligator moment? That's not a Big Lip Alligator moment. Well, this is why. They're calling upon the sea ponies. And so, with a resounding. There they are. The sea ponies help our heroes cross the moat and somehow know how to get inside. Okay, even that is stretching it. Even if it was magic, that's stretching it. Guard happens over see this and goes to tear. Scorpion is being scolded, however, thankfully, the guard warns Tiark that the ponies are arriving. And Scorpion runs off while Tiark's distracted. Ah, excellent! But as for you, Scorpion, you. Scorpion! Scorpion! Scorpion frees Amber and Spike, who is imprisoned with her, apparently, and Megan and the others enter the castle proper. They sneak around, but unfortunately the guards are ninjas, and Applejack gets quietly captured, so they don't notice. However, as they enter the throne room, they notice a little too late, and... Trap. So, you seek the Rainbow of Darkness. <laughs> it is mine, and so is your friend. Applejack! Oh, Holy shifter, no! Not Applejack! Then Scorpion randomly has a big damn hero moment, fights off the guards, and the heroes make a break for it. <laughs> Scorpion tries to fight Tyrk, but, you know, he's obviously overpowered. Convenient. Hey, fight the fowls. Megan and Firefly performed the stunt again. Megan managed to knock the storm throw out of Tyrk's hand. Unfortunately, the Mathlodons cause Firefly to crash and drop the storm throw into Tyrk's hands. Over, little ponies. The power is mine! The power is yours! From this moment forth, the night will last forever! Not near guns and reports, they reuse the fire with a French of his magic. Take this! It's not doing anything! Maybe the Moochick was wrong! Behold the power of darkness! A rainbow! It's gone! We're finished! <laughs> 
Aside from a quest records, Friendship is Magic pretty much did this twice, with the second time being Discord's defeat and Return of Harmony. I can't rule out Wedding Part 2 nearly had this, but instead of whipping nice rainbows, it was just beams of light and Sombra was pretty much killed by the Crystal Lane for those Radiance crews who were charged by the Crystal Heart. And neither of them had anything close to the same pre-defeat dialogue. Of course, then again, neither does the special. The ponies return to normal. It turns out Tyr's other henchmen were also regular creatures corrupted by the storm throw. Aside from Spike, of course, because any generation before Friendship was Magic fan would know Spike is a baby dragon. And Scorpion turns out to be. Scorpion! What's happening? He's really a plant. It's just a little girl's cartoon. I really should relax. It's just a little girl's cartoon. I really should just relax. It's just a little girl's cartoon. I really should just relax. It's just a little girl's cartoon. I really should just relax. <laughs> I'm really not sure if that was supposed to be cured or not. So the movie ends during the end credits with Firefly returning Megan home. But I'm pretty sure that's not the last I'll see of her. Now, something I've been forgetting to do is to give a few thoughts and then rate the episode. I hate trying to have to rate things. But I'm just gonna do this anyway because you now it's a review and I should be rating and it should be rated. Jesus. I'd be right anyway. <laughs> anyway, for the record, Trouble by the Slice gets a 2 out of 5, and Angels Make Manhattan gets a 3 out of 5. I would have rated it higher, but the stupidity of the Angels' plan, the fact that it felt like the Angels were just shoehorned in, is an excuse to kill off certain characters, who I won't spoil right now. Go watch that review instead. As for Rescue from Midnight Castle, mm, oh, it's really more of a little girl show than Friendship is Magic is. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't going to be any less harsh on it. I mean, if anything, Friendship is Magic is exactly why I should be harsh here. Now that said, I know Queen Chrysalis was a pretty scary villain, but she was nowhere near as bad as Kirk, and as a show for small children, I can't really let that slide. Kirk was overall an incredibly uninteresting villain, too. King Sombra was a better villain than Kirk. I'm not joking. At least Sombra played his role well. A looming threat that isn't really supposed to do much. Kirk, on the other hand, is supposed to be able to do stuff. But he doesn't. He made Scorpion do all of the work for him for most of the move for its special. And even when he starts doing things on his own, he still doesn't really get to do much. I really wish I knew how to put it into words just how bad a villain Kirk it was, really. Most of the music was just downright unbearable, and the only remotely good song was the one that everyone's going to remember for ages on, ages to come. Call Upon the Sea Ponies. Only for how insanely catchy it is. Speaking of the Sea Ponies, I know there were no toys of them at first, but why did Hasbro make toys of them after special was made. That was a poor marketing decision in my eyes. 
And as a result, the Sea Ponies will likely only appear again in this non-canon Generation 4 book. And they're not even the same kind of Sea Pony. They look more like seahorses than the old ones, and the females are called mermaids. I'm not making this up. As far as I know, there are no toys of them either. Aside from Tyrk and Scorpion, the voice acting was awful, but the art style was at least decent for its time, and it sure as hell wasn't Generation 3. You know the one. I give Rescue from Midnight Castle a 3 out of 5. Now that the review is out of the way, it's time to get the Dark Decade off my rear end. You guys got the thing I sent you on that quest to get, right? No. Good. I'm not allowed to use it myself, nor am I allowed to just give it to you as that would qualify as direct divine intervention. Sorry I had to drag you two into this. As a hero, I'm always willing to help a pony or person in need. Besides, we still owe you for existing to this day. Hooray for shameless self-advertising! Hey, at least I'm not selling anything. I might get few internet personalities I can think of. Now, it's bad enough when you're making money off of shows loaded with copyrighted content, guys. Not that most of you aren't amazingly talented and do deserve some reward for your talent. I can't really complain. You all deserve the money. Especially a lot more than a hack like me and my story writer. And heaven forbid you actually get into the movie or television industries where your writing skills will go completely to waste with all the executive meddling and stuff. Aren't we getting sidetracked? Well, we're waiting for Dark Decade to actually show up. We don't know where he is, just that he'll come to me. Not to. Your time has come. Speak of the devil. Uh, no, not really. My mortal body will just respawn while my immortal form will be rendered useless. It's just that I don't really enjoy the pain when I do die. That's not really something you can ever get used to. You sat allies. Your pony friends cannot save you from me. Now, before he finishes changing, Taste the rainbow, mother father! No! What is this madness? I can't be decayed. There's already a decade. Sorry, I can't help you with that. It's something you two will have to work out on your own. Well, I'm glad that's over with. Speak for yourself. I don't think I'll be introducing any more villains or doing stories that last for more than one review for a while. By the way, don't bother digging through Matthew's blog. I'll leave a link in the description, change my mind, to a single post that'll explain everything. Also, when I do introduce another villain, if all goes well, I have plans for the newly reformed decade. Let's just say I refuse to accept the idea of Kuga rising at the ultimate representing yellow and black. I'm a story writer, by the way. Not to a story writer. That's me, the guy in the tux. Uh, well, until next time, stay tuned. That's with tools, by the way, not a year.